Well, this is a flex tension. So January 31st is just the last possible day, and Brexit could happen before then. It contains two key dates before then, December 1st and, Jan and January 1st. Uh, so Brexit could happen at any of those intervals if the situation allows it. So that December 1st deadline would be for Boris Johnson's deal. If it was approved in the next couple weeks, then they could go ahead and start Brexit on December 1st. Uh, now, if there's an election in mid-December and the result yields a very clear majority for Boris Johnson and MPs who support his deal, then that deal could be approved after the election around Christmas time, and you could get a Brexit at the very first day of 2020. Uh, now, if that election is not conclusive, which many suspect it will not be, then the the 31st January deadline allows time for wrangling, further debate, trying to see if some kind of deal can be get, gotten across the line, uh, or maybe even canceling Brexit. Uh, the key thing to watch then, if the Parliament's election result is not clear, is whether they decide to take the issue back to the British people for a final vote on Boris Johnson's deal or staying in the EU. That would require yet another extension, though, because British law requires several months for a campaign for a referendum. So if that election result is unclear, it's kind of hard to see how we would actually have a 31st January exit, because uh, certainly if Boris Johnson gets a majority in that election, he's going to be very eager to get Brexit done right away by the first of the year. And if we haven't had Brexit by 1st January, it means that Boris Johnson did not get a clear majority. And then it's hard to see how he would have a majority for his deal within another month. And that probably does mean that a second referendum is inevitable, which means another Brexit extension. So I would say a 31st January Brexit is relatively unlikely and more likely is one of those two dates before that deadline in this flex tension arrangement.